I've got Michael Holding with me in front of the touch screen. Mikey, we're going to chat about some of the aspects of the series and importantly some of the things that uh, you in particular wanted to point out about some of the thinking the guys have done and the improvement they've done and also a couple of really special things from some of the players. So, I mean, wh wh what's the one thing that you really have liked from the South African point of view? What I liked about the South African cricketers, and especially the young cricketers, the, the adjustments that they have been able to make. Right. We know a lot of people have talent. We know a lot of people have started their careers quite well. But then people find out their faults. And then it's up to them to make the adjustments to their game, whether they are bowlers or batsmen, to then nullify those, those faults and to continue to be progressively better and better throughout their career. And that's what happens at this level. I mean, if you don't adjust and make the improvements, you're going to get caught, uh, left behind, right? <laughs> a long way behind. You'll yep. get left behind so far, you'll be out of the team. Yep. Because people study opposition. They, you know, they get tapes at the end of every yep. day's play. They know exactly how they score their runs, where they bowl the ball, that sort of thing. So you've got to be able to make adjustments if your faults are found out. Let's get into this, Mike. We've got David Warner here. Now, this is David Warner, and, and obviously he played very well at the start of the series. And I just want to highlight here we've got some red streams around the wicket we've got some blue streams that you're going to see some blue balls as well you're going to see from over the wicket but we'll get Mike to explain that shortly but these are some deliveries from around the wicket well he actually faced 17 balls in total in that Durban test match from round the wicket and he scored a lot of runs off those 17 balls we just selected four of four of them there but they are all aggressive shots that he scored runs off because he likes the freedom outside his off stump and that's why I'm talking about now the bowlers need to think perhaps that's not quite the right way to go we have to now make an adjustment and also, he, I mean, he's such an important player. He was such an important player for Australia at the start of a series. He gets going and dominates the rest of the series. There's big trouble for the bowlers. For, for sure. And he scores his runs quickly. He can certainly set the tone for his team. He can embarrass bowlers because he's such a good player. So it's important that when you find out his strengths, you then think, no, I can't do that. I've got to find something different. And they certainly did. Right. So let's talk about the different thing they found. Mikey, what did they find? They found that when the ball over the wicket, he is, instead of going round the wicket, ball over the wicket and kept the ball as close as possible, giving him no room outside the off stump, they got him out. He was not scoring freely, and eventually they got through his defences. Two Rabada, two, uh, one Ngidi. Well, Ngidi uh, and maybe yeah. the best was Ngidi's. I mean, that was sensational. Yeah, that was an excellent del yeah. delivery from Ngidi. But, you know, as you can see there, all three deliveries pitched in pretty much the same area, a good length in line with the stumps and heading towards the off-stump. One of them straightened a little bit from, from just about off-stump line, continuing onto the off-stump. Okay. But just don't give him any room outside off-stump. So they shut him down, got him out, quietened it, and then, of course, he uh, disappeared. Right, let's get to Markram. Let's just talk initially before you even start about Markram. What did you spot about him? Well, Markram had been having problems judging boards outside of his off-stump, exactly which boards he had to play at and which boards he did not need to play at. And also... He had problems with his bat coming across his body. He is missing balls right. that were pretty straight. And you can see there from his setup that he changed from one to the from the one to the other, India to Australia, but the angle of his bat. You go. can see the angle of his bat there is a lot straighter there in the, in the setup. Not just that, but the positioning that he has now taken at the crease. Against India, you could see mid stump, you could see off stump. Against Australia, he moved right across the off stump. You could just about see off stump underneath his pad there. And then he was able to judge the ball outside his off stump a lot better. And also the bat came down straighter. If you look at the India now as the ball comes through, look at where the bat is heading. It's heading towards slips. Look at the gap between his head and the bat there. And if you look now against Australia, when he picks his bat up, the ball is on its way down to him. The bat is coming up. Look how close to his head now it is. It's not any longer going towards second slip. It's a lot closer to his head, going almost straight back and coming straight down towards the ball. And that was something that he realised playing against India. He had to make the necessary adjustment against Australia. And you can see the end result. A couple big, of centuries. Absolutely. The big difference also against India, he was playing a lot through here. Wasn't yep. he? You mentioned that sort of curtain rail, if you like, across his body. A lot of shots through. Because uh, of where the bat was coming from. Correct. But then he got this right. I mean, we'll show a wagon wheel for the series against Australia. I mean, it was quite extraordinary the way he got this right, Mikey. Yeah. Runs through the onside, yes, because he's quite strong through the onside, but he needed to improve his offside play, and you can see the amount of boundaries he got through the offside here. Tons and tons of runs through the offside, and because he was able to then detect which balls he needed to play at and which balls he did not need to play at, and of course, stop bringing that bat across his body, runs galore.
Brilliant. Right, let's get to Vernon Philander today. I mean, how good was this, Mikey? <laughs> well, this is what you're accustomed to seeing now from Vernon Philander. He's absolutely brilliant. You can put a handkerchief on the, on the pitch, and he pretty much hits that handkerchief whenever he wants to. Those four balls, very, very close to each other. And then a couple of balls that were full as well, driving at one outside the off stump. Full delivery, one that came back in, got rid, got rid of Cummins. Vernon Philander, fantastic this morning, fantastic throughout his career. That doesn't tell the total story, though, does no. it? I mean, Vernon's build-up is brilliant. Yeah, it's always great to see wicket-taking deliveries. Yes. But you also need to see what he has done apart from wicket-taking deliveries. And you can, when you have a look at that, left and right-handers, of course, those on the right-hand side of the screen there are to the left-handers. You can see how concentrated all those balls are. They're not lots of short balls or lots of full deliveries. They are pretty much just around that good area. Sure, a few balls just short of the good length and a few balls beyond the good length. I suppose it would depend on the height of the batsman, of course. He would make the necessary adjustment. Do you like mountains? Yeah, I climb them sometimes. Not at my old age now, though. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a mountain mat for you. I mean, yeah. this is this is. I mean, th th I think we need to study this a little bit. This is Vernon Philander's line of length throughout the entire, the entire series. series. The guys that are doing Hawkeye. I mean, have a look how high this gets, Mikey. They say they haven't seen this height before. It's a, it's the it's the denseness of balls pitching there. Yes, that's just to show his consistency. Almost every ball is around that eight meter, between eight meter and six meter length, and that is why the mountain is so high. It just shows you the concentration of deliveries in that area, which makes it so difficult for batsmen. The surgeon, as they say. The surgeon, magnificent stuff, and he was brilliant, obviously, on day five of the last test. So it's Mikey, thanks very much. The learning curve, the, the way the guys are learning is, is brilliant, and the, and the very coach, important. The coach is pushing him, and he's made a big uh, difference or two with Rabada as well. You'd have to think that the coaching staff has had a lot to do with both the batsmen and the bowlers yeah. because of course in Markram made the adjustment you would think that the batting coach had something to do with that as well good stuff Mikey thanks very much from the twins to the touchscreen <laughs> that's us